let us pray. Father, our hearts rejoice because of what Jesus did for us. On the cross of Calvary, he paid the whole price. And because he did, we can have the peace and the joy of God in our hearts today. We're asking that you give every one of us the faith to hold on to Jesus Christ. That, Lord, all that he did on the cross of Calvary will be ours in Jesus. Jesus' name. Bless us this day. Speak your word of comfort to us. Lead us into the perfect will of God. Show us the light by the word. In Jesus' name we pray. It has been a wonderful time together as we have gone from verse to verse, passage to passage, studying what the Bible has for us on Christian marriage and the family. We've seen God's own provision in marriage and we have seen our own participation in that marriage. And as I bring the series on marriage to a conclusion today, I'm talking on staying together. It's wonderful to be married. It's wonderful to stay together in love and joy and peace and harmony. The psalmist in Psalm 133 talks about the staying together. You come together in holy matrimony with your husband or with your wife. You ought to think very seriously and plan very seriously because marriage is a life commitment. Make up your mind that once you are married, you want to stay together in the marriage union until death do you part. Well, please, you keep on loving as you keep on living. In Psalm 133, in Psalm 133, from verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. In this short sermon, as I introduce to you this day the necessity of staying together after you are married, I want you to see ten descriptive words. It's telling us that family oneness and family harmony is good. Recognize that the best thing you can do for your family, the greatest thing you can do for your family is to maintain the unity, the harmony in that place. Behold how good it is to be united. It is good in itself, it is good for ourselves as husbands and husband and wife, it is good for our children, it is good for the church, it is good for the nation when family 
family stay together. It also tells us it is pleasant. Number one, it is good. Then it gives us pleasure. It is pleasant. You derive the greatest joy and pleasure and enjoyment when the family, when they are staying together. That means you are united in heart. You are united in your aim and your goal. You are staying together and your spirits are not clashing, but your spirits are living together, moving together, flowing together. And it is a pleasant thing when husband and wife will share mutual com comfort in true fellowship in an atmosphere that is totally free from strife, free from division and free from conflict. It says it is good and then it tells us it's pleasant. In verse 2 it says it is precious. They're looking for pearls of precious value. Unity is one. You're looking for a great thing that is so precious to you, so important to you, that you ought to keep as a precious treasure. Unity and harmony in the home is one. Now the psalmist affirms that it is also holy. It says it is only because it's likening it, it's making it to be similar to the precious ointment upon the head of Aaron. Only the high priest could be anointed with that type of oil. To God and to Israel and to the priests and to the high priests and to the Lord giver Moses, it was a holy sacred thing. It was never poured upon a stranger, a type of oil. And it was never poured upon an ordinary man. Now the Bible is telling you that the type of unity and harmony we are talking about between husband and wife is holy, it is set apart, it is not poured upon a stranger, upon an ordinary relationship between you and anybody else. There is a precious and holy unity between those who are married, a togetherness, a harmony that can only be found among those who are truly married. When he tells us that this unity is talking about is diffusive. It says if you put it on the head of Aaron, it will flow down to the rest of the body. The type of unity we are talking about. The lovely harmony and fellowship we are talking about. Is the one that flows and affects the whole body of the whole family. The partners, the children, and all beneath its influence are blessed and happy as this holy ointment of unity is flowing through to them. And the children are happier because of the flow of this lovely unity and harmony in the family. They are happier, they are better because of this unity flowing to all members in the family. The psalmist tells us he's talking about something that is special. Now you think about it. Something that is good. Something that is pleasant. Something that is precious. At the same time it is holy. At the same time it is, um, it is diffusive. At the same time it is special. 
Like the ointment, you know, it set Aaron apart for special service. I'm telling you that Aaron could never offer special service to the Lord until the anointing special oil came upon him. There is a hidden talent in your wife. There is a hidden capacity in your husband that would only be brought out in special service to the family, to the church, and to the nation as the holy oil of unity and harmony is preserved in that home. Talent is so the wisdom to be a high priest was in error. The capacity, the possibility was in error. Until that special holy anointing oil came upon him, he could not be set apart for that special service. Telling you that your husband is a masterpiece from the hand of God. Your wife is a masterpiece as the handiwork of God. But you know when that unity, that harmony, that fellowship, that love comes upon her or upon him as the holy anointing all came upon Aaron, it will set you apart as a family for special service. It tells us that this unity is flowing like the oil. Also, for it is not stagnant. And once you really get married, and you marry in the will of God, you walk in the spirit. And live in the spirit. And you allow this chain together, this Christian unity, to be the basis of your home. You set it in motion and it will not cease to flow into the rest of the body. It cannot remain confined. In a single place where it first fell, it will continue until all the parts of the family they are blessed with it. And saying Christian affection has no limit. Most of we pay if a Christian it flows naturally to all members of the family without partiality, without favoritism. Now look at that verse 2 again. It is like precious ointment upon the head. That ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended. So the psalmist says the unity I'm talking about, the harmony I'm talking about, the staying together I'm talking about, has a descending influence and effect upon the family. It's a type of affectionate unity that descends from the strong to the weak members of the family. And you know, as it descends, it's keep the same quality. The oil is the same quality as it's flowing from the head right to the skirts of the garment. It descends to the Loneliest in the family to the least lovable in the family. Oh man, sure. See, I ran into a lady. Do not see any tea at Casia like tea. Go, Jack, do not know. Now, what does the dew do when it comes upon grass, upon plants in the in the bush? Think that tea, the bass says, See, I ran away to a busy area. I get in a book. Oh man, she it refreshes. Oh man, to like so. The psalmist says that you know, this uh, unity and this harmony, the affection in the family is refreshing. Nitorina, all only so we pay a report. He shall cut on Benini delay. And it's as dew it helps in the life and the growth of the tender plants. Those are the children, the tender plants in the family. Number 10. It says that's where the blessing is commanded. You know, blessing is promised. 
But blessing becomes commanded when there is unity and harmony and love and affection in the whole. Where love reigns, God reigns. Where hatred is absent, Satan is absent. Where division and strife are gone out of the door, Satan has followed out of the door. Where there is unity, where there is love, where there is affection, God is there. God is reigning there. God gives special blessings to united, loving families. Because we are told in Psalm 133, verse 3, the last part of verse 3, for there the Lord commanded, commanded, the blessing even life forevermore and so that is why we want to really examine the unity that ought to be in the family which we call staying together we are putting this message under two uh, sections the divine presentation and the human realization you see the intention of God for marriage is that we stay together is that we live together love together pray together do everything together in fact the Bible says in plain clear language we just become one flesh and under the divine presentation for marriage I'm going to talk of God's plan Christ preaching and the Spirit's picture the plan of God is to alone the preaching of Christ and the picture of the Spirit. That was the plan of God. In our marriage, it's in Genesis chapter 2. Reading there from verse 22. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God are taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And in verse 23, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And verse 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Nitorina Lyokuni Yoshi Mafi Baba Win Yare Sile Yoshi Piara Ma Yare Mwasi Diarakan. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Nitorina ni Okuni Yoshi Mafi Baba Win Yare Sile. And shall cleave unto his wife. Yoshi Piara Ma Yare. Be joined unto his wife. Yo Dako Ma Yare. Stay with his wife. Yo Wakwe Lua Yare. Live with his wife. Yo Maba Yare. Be united with his wife. Yo Dako Lua Yare. And the two of them shall become one flesh. Not two tenants living in a home. Not like two co-workers sharing the same office. Not, not like two people sharing the same kitchen. Not like two friends sharing the same bank account. Not like two business partners who are just taking care of something. The two shall become one flesh. They become one flesh because they become indivisible. They become one flesh because they become indissoluble. And it means they are there to live together, to love together just for life. And you know in Malachi chapter 2. That's the 
last book of the Old Testament. Ini wetu ke imaje mulala. Malachi chapter two. Malachi uri keji. Reading from verse thirteen. Lati ya seke tala. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out in so much that he regarded not the offering any more, or received feet with good will at your hand. E yi li e yi si tun she e yi fi o mi je a te e kun a ti gbe bo pe pe olu a man le To be ti on ko fi ka o re yi si man ta bi ki o fi nou di dun ban kan lo wo yi You know the Bible tells Israel, Israel has left the good thing the enemy shall pursue him E bi be yi so ne pa Israel yi pe Israel ti gbe on re re so no ka yo le pa re The good thing is the unity in the marriage On re re na mi isho kan ni ni gbe ya wo The pleasant thing is the living together, staying together the Bible says it is good, it is pleasant, it is precious, it is holy. It tells us it is diffusive. It is special and it is flowing. It is refreshing and leading to the people that are so joined together. And it is there that the Lord has commanded blessing. But to see the children of Israel, they left this good thing. They were seeking God with prayer. Tears and weeping and strong crying. And God says, I will not answer your prayer. I will not hear you. Verse 14, yet you say, wherefore, what have we done? Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treasurously yet is she thy companion the wife of the covenant nitori oluwa ti se eleri laarin iwa ati laarin aya ewe re eni ti wo ti hu wa itan si be le egbe re le ohun sai se ati aya ma jemun re you know they are dealt treasurously some of these men had left their wives and you know they were just praying and saying oh God you know I'm free now can you choose another person for me and God said I have been witness between you and your wife already you have dealt treasurously against her you treated her you have become divided and you have become separated you have become divorced yet in my sight is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant that you have not agreed with the separation you can never bring God into agreement with separation or with divorce or with division or with conflict in the family in verse 15 did he not make one yet had he the residue of the spirit and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed therefore take it to your spirit let none of you deal treasurously against the wife of his youth who is the wife of his youth the first wife you ever married that had never married another man before that's the bible calls her the wife of thy covenant in verse 14 in verse 15 he calls her you know that's why the wife of his youth verse 16 see this and this is just marvelous you know some people don't know the mind of God about marriage but verse 16 says for the Lord the God of Israel says that he hated putting away God hates divorce he hates separation for one covereth violence with his garment says the Lord of hosts therefore take it to your spirit that ye deal not treasurously 
Enikan fi wa ipa bu aso re mole le Oluwa awon omogun wi nitori na e so emi yin ki e ma si se ki e ma se huwa etan That's the plan of God for marriage Eleyi ni ero eti Olorun fun igbeyawo Was those two people come together Se nigba ti awon yan mi ti ba wa papo As long as they live they shall love one another Ni won gba ton ba wa laaye won o fe ran ara won As long as they live they shall be together Ni won gba ton ba wa laaye won o jo ma gbe po In Romans chapter 7 Ninu we Romo rikeje Reading from verse 1 to verse 3 Lati ese ki ni de iketa Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, the mind of God, the intention of God. How that the law, that is the word of God, has dominion over a man as long as he lives. I want to see Oma Ophi, it's all my root, also my room, but long, let me embarrass or pay Ophi, Palori, and your new one, but you bow a lie. Verse two, as a cage for the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Nitori of Benito Nioko, he went back to your corner, one lie, a few feet, demo corner. You might be a corner, but who are two select room, you know, if you're a corner. And when you have been married as long as you're living and as long as your husband is living or your wife is living, stay together. No, but to Batish, we are with your corner, what lie, yeah, yeah, what lie, and your mind before. And in verse three, a secretary, sorry, last part of verse two. But if the husband be there, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband leaves, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be there, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Sugma bi oko re ba ku obo lowo ofin na ki yo ki yo si je pa nsaga bi o ba ni oko mi na See when God created Adam and Eve Nigba ti Olorun da Adam ati pa God could have created an Esther and Elizabeth together with Eve Olorun iba iba ti da eseri pelu eh pelu Elizabeth ni na pelu Eva Just put Esther and Ethel and Elizabeth and all these other people having the same initials with Eve just put them in another garden and say Adam if there is any trouble come on me kick out that woman there's another esther there eh ki olorun ko wa da elizabeth to to wa ki o to wa da ilu miran pelu re to je pe nkan na later kan na lo jo n bere oruko won ti olorun si wa so fun adam pe bi yen bi o ba ta pele pele kan ki o ta jade tori pe mu ni elizabeth so god could have created an adam and an eve olorun iba da adam ati epa kan then he will create another albert somewhere and say eve you know you have any problem with adam let you know just part and then albert is there you can get him ko wa pe albert you know, I was going to um, Agege one day, and I, and I saw a signboard. He said, spare parts sold here. And you know, if your motor, you know, has any problem, you have spare parts. If your marriage has a problem, no spare parts. God has no shop where you can go and buy a spare part and you know just change it, remove the ignition, remove the key and then replace it by another woman. There is no provision like that. Allah no ko ni shop ni bi to ti ma nta e ni bi da ti ma nta e yara igbeya wo pe boya nkan kan yoro ni wa yo kokoro e puro wa lo ra omiran wa fi si. So you see you are married you are married. O ti se igbeya wo le kan so ti ni. It's a wonderful thing when you are married and you are staying together with just that man with just that woman. Ni ka gbaya no ni nigba to ba ti se igbeya wo ti o si duro pelu okunrin tabi obirin God created just that one woman for one man. And he ordained that they should cleave together in marriage. It was to be and it is still to be a strong bond. A one-flesh relationship. An indivisible relationship as long as both of them shall remain alive. 
And you know God has not changed his mind. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. The intention of God at the beginning is still the intention of God today. He is still for one man, one woman relationship. He is still for no divorce and remarriage. He is still for living together, staying together, united together as long as both of you shall remain alive. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 For I am the Lord, I change not. I show you the plan of God. Now let me show you the preaching of Christ concerning the this, uh, you know, the, the intention of God. The divine intention or the divine presentation for marriage. In Matthew chapter 19. I'm reading there from verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And when Pharisees see what's all done, and one done, we want to be from pay, oh, hat off for a conic, you acquire a silly, and it's all you on a wanted to know whether there was a reason they could just, you know, divorce their wife. And in verse 4, he answered and said unto them, Have ye never read your Bible? Have ye never read that which that he which made them at the beginning made them male singular and female singular? And he Just one male and one female. And said. You see, you can never get Jesus to contradict his father in heaven. You can never get Jesus to preach anything that will just oppose or be contrary to what the father had established at the beginning of creation. So they came to him and they said, can we pull apart? Can we rip ourselves apart? Can we separate? Can we just go to the court and you know finalize everything and just be put asunder? Have you not heard what my father said about it? Have you not read what was written in the word of God concerning that matter? That my father created them at the beginning, created them male and female. And said for this cause for this reason shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and that way only two shall be one flesh so where are for they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore God has joined together let not man put asunder reading in 1st Corinthians chapter 7 and I'm reading there in verses 10 and 11 verses 10 and 11 and unto the married I command yet not I but the Lord let not the wife depart from her husband keep staying together keep living together if there are problems see how to present the problems to God solve the problems and keep staying together because this is the commandment of the Lord let not the wife depart from her husband but and if she depart she should not depart but 
and if she depart let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife in Matthew chapter 4 I'm reading there in verse 4 you know the, the devil may come to tempt you the devil may come to tell you now read that thing apart divide that one flesh and keep that woman away throw that man away now the devil came to the Lord Jesus Christ and tempted him to go against the plan of God for his life and in verse 4 but he answered and said it is written man shall not lay by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God and what is, the, what is the word proceeding out of the mouth of God concerning your marriage? I have been witness between you and the wife of your youth. Therefore, take it that you did not treasurously against your wife. Lay by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What is the word proceeding out of the mouth of God for your marriage? This cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. So you can see the preaching of Christ com uh, confirms the plan of the provision of God. That your marriage shall stand as long as both of you shall continue to live. And again, we are told that marriage is a one man, one woman relationship. It's a one man, one woman life commitment. It's an indissoluble union. And you know, Jesus declared that marriage is the work of God. God. Therefore, he tells the court and tells everybody, don't touch it. Jesus is so bad, 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 you see the plan of God the preaching of Christ now the picture of the spirit in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 the Holy Spirit gave the proper picture of marriage to the Apostle Paul you know when God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost are united on something if you are a believer you just get into that union and you become united with God if God the Father has planned it and God the Son Jesus Christ has preached it and God the Holy Spirit has pictured it to us as believers who believe in God Almighty but Jesus as our Savior but the Holy Ghost as our comfort and as our God just must follow that plan preaching and picture and so in uh, I mean Ephesians chapter 5 I'm reading there from verse 25 Husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for eight that he might present uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any certain but that it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own body see that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as they love the church 
nitori ko si eni ti o ti ko ri rara re bi ko se pe ki o ma bo ki o si ma si kere gege bi christ ti se si ijo but we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones nitori pe awale e ya rara re ati ti e rara re ati ti egungun rara re remember what adam said ona ti o ti adam this now is bone of my bone flesh of my flesh e yi yi ni egungun ni egungun mi rara ni ni rara ni he says the church are members of the body of christ o si bi pe ijo je e ya rara christ you cannot divide christ and the church o ko si le pe ijo ati christ In the same way, the husband and the wife, they are one flesh, and you cannot divide the husband and the wife. Lord, I cannot acquire the young one day. I cannot acquire the one. And it says, for this cause, in verse thirty-one, shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. Ese ko kan li logbo ni tori e yili okuni yo se fi baba ti yare silo ngo si da koma yare awo meje di asi di arakan. In Genesis chapter two, God the Father talked about one flesh. In Genesis story ke yo lo ngo baba so ni pa arakan. In Matthew chapter 19 verses 4 to 6 God the Son talked about the one flesh relationship. Ninu we ma tori kokan di logun lati ese ikerin titi de ikepa Olorun omo so nipa eh nipa ara kan. In Ephesians chapter 5 which were reading the Holy Spirit through the apostle Paul talked about the one flesh relationship. Eh ni o Ephesians ori karun ni bi ti an ka iba kan na emi mo nipa se Paul apostle o nso nipa iba ti ko ara kan. Verse 32 he says this is a great mystery. Ese keji de logbon wi pe asirin la ni eyi. But I also speak on Christ and the church. So by me so ni party Christ ya ti ti jo. Never be less let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. So gba ki olukuluku yin ki o feran aya re gege bi ohun ti kara re. Even as himself. Gege bi ohun ti kara re. Even as himself. Gege bi ohun ti kara re. You forsake yourself when you say in je nigba to ba nse ase yin ko ara yin sile. No you love yourself when you are saved. Rara nigba ti wo kan ba nse esan wa tun feran ara re. And therefore if you love Love yourself when you are sick. Love your wife when she is sick. Nito ni na ni ba ti wo ba nsha isan to si fe ara re fe ara ya re ni ba to ba nsha isan. No even when you have a mental problem. Ni ba to ba ti le ni awon opolopo aku. Do you forsake yourself? Ti won ko ara re si. Oh no nothing like that at all. Ara ko si nkan to ni be. The same way whatever problem your husband or your wife may have, do not forsake him, do not forsake her. Lo na kan na isoro ki isoro ti a ya tabi oko re iba ni ma se ko sile. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Ti a ya ki o si beru oko re. That's the picture the whole Holy Spirit has given to us. Eleyi ni apeju we ti emi mo ti bi fun wa. How do we make it work? Ba oni a se mu ki o sise. How do we realize it what God has presented unto us? Ba oni a se mo ikan ti Olorun fi fun wa yi. Here we are. Awani. You see in Galatians chapter 5. Ninu we Galatia ori karun. The Bible is very very clear. Bible ye kedere. You know what destroys marriage? Nje mo ti o nba igbe yawo. You know what removes the pleasant thing, the good thing, the holy thing, the happy union between husband and wife? Nje mo to mu nkan mi mo nkan to dara, nkan ti o si serere ti o sokan ninu igbe yawo la ri oko ati aya kuro. You don't have to go too far. O ko ni lati lo jina. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Ninu we Galatia ori karun ese kokan. These are the things that bring problem upon us in our marriage now the works of the flesh are manifest which are the adultery as an enemy of marriage once adultery comes in the stable marriage becomes unstable security is in marriage turns into insecurity love is turning to self and hatred and there is Division and conflict and strife. And then fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulation. Wrath. Strife. Sedition. Heresy. Envy. Murder. Drunkenness. Rebellion. And such like. They distort marriage. But then they do not only disturb marriage they disturb us from getting to the kingdom of God. You lose your peace, you lose your joy when you get into this thing. You lose your security and your rest of mind. You lose your health. You lose your manhood when you get 
into this since we are talking about. When you get into adultery and fornication, you even lose your self-esteem and self-respect. You lose the self confidence you have in you in yourself. Then you lose, you know, the rest of mind, everything you've got. And you lose the peace of God. The salvation of your soul. The kingdom of God. And of course, you also lose your marriage. You, you may still be staying together, but you know, are you enjoying it? What keeps a marriage together? No, you know, you don't have to go too far. And if you just stay in this chapter, your marriage will be together. You're married with your husband and with your wife. You are already a believer right now. And I say, what can I do? I want that happy union and that affection and that harmony within us. What can I do? This is all you need to keep your marriage together. Verse 22. For the fruit of the Spirit is love. You need more than that. To keep your, to keep your marriage together. All you need. Love. You know when you love one another. I'm talking about sacrificial love. I'm talking about love that is not selfie, that will think of the other fellow. You, the wife, will think of the husband. The husband will think of the wife. I'm talking about love that is sacrificial. Love that denies self. Love that is unselfish. I'm talking about a love that is kind. I'm talking about a type of love that is tender. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, this is the Lord that keeps your marriage together. Be ye kind one to another. The husband will be kind to the wife and the wife will be kind to the husband. Tender hearted. And out of tender heart, Tender words will come out. Latin or to your or to your new majority. Forgiving one another. That's the love you are talking about in marriage. How far do you forgive? Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. How did God forgive you? Did he forgive you only nine sins out of ten and say, then come back next year and forgive the rest? You know your wife has offended you and uh, you know okay I'll be able to forgive you two of those uh, five uh, sins you have committed but the rest three I think I'll have to wait till next year. While you are waiting to forgive her you are punishing her. You turn her into a secondary school girl. You even beat her as if you are beating a secondary school girl. And then you withdraw pocket money from her like we withdraw pocket money from secondary school children. We even tell her she may not be able to eat, you know, we're just dealing with her as if she is a servant, a school girl, uh, you know, somebody that has no self-esteem, no self-respect. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. You say, my brother, I like to forgive, but I want to know the measure. That's a good question. In uh, Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Verse 3. Take it to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. You must underline verse 4. That's what makes the difference between church goer and believer. You must underline this verse 4. It's the difference between the Sunday Christian and the daily Christian. This is the one that makes a mark between the Christmas Christian and you 
they know the real believer. Ele lo pa mi, to pa mi yato sa arin awon oni gbagbo keresi ati awon oni gbagbo to. Don't you know the difference between a religious fellow and a righteous fellow? O fe ma yato to wa laarin elesin ati olododo eniyan. That's what will tell you the difference. Ese kerin yo so yato re. You want to know whether your wife is a Christian? O fe ma boya ra aya re je Christian ibi. That's what will tell you. Ese kerin yo so. You want to know whether your husband is a real believer following the Lord obeying the law? O fe ma boya ko re je oni gbagbo to to ti o n gboran si Oluwa lenu to n tele Oluwa. That's what will tell you. Ese kerin yo so. What does it say? Ki lo so. Let me read it to you. Ye kin ka se ti gbo re. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, please do me a favor on the line in a day. Bi o ba si bi o ba si se olin erin meje le ojo jo soju anu fun mi ki o ba mi pala si ojo seven times in a day erin meje le ojo grace is wonderful ore ofe ji ara grace is pleasant ore ofe when you have the grace of god nigba to ba ni ore ofe you will smile through the storm wa ma re ni laarin you will forgive seven times in a day da ri ji lerin meje le ojo seven times in a day turn to thee saying i'm sorry i repent aha that's what you did in the morning no don't say that just say i forgive you my wife yeah. i forgive you my husband lerin meje lerin meje le ojo ti o si pada to wa lerin meje le ojo pe morunu pada ma je wi pe ehe mo ran te ile to se laaro rara nkan ti wa kan se ni pe mo dariji aya mi mo dariji oko mi you know what peter said o mo ti pe teru wi you said his name is not written there how do you know peter to o ni oru a ko ruko re sile ba lo se mo pe pe teru soro just write it down sa ko sile that peter was among the people that you know talk that of us for pe teru je ara won to so leyin When we get to heaven, I want you to do something. Go to Peter and say, "Bro, pray that you know you are the, you are one of the people that said this." Ni ba to ba don we wala ba pe teru ko so pe bro so pe oja a o kani no a wato wa to so ni ba ti answer ro yi. Peter was married. Pe teru she be ya wo. Jesus said, "When you offended seven times in a day, forgive." And Peter was among the people the apostles said unto the Lord, "Ah, increase our faith." Ni 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 pe teru wa la na wati o o. to to wa ni be ni gbati Jesu n soro yi ti wi pe ni ni gbati eni keji re ba se o ni eni meje ni ojo to ba si to wa ki o dariji se o wa wi pe o da wa ni ojo wa ni me de eni meje ni ojo when you realize when you forgive you forget ba si mo pe ni gba to ba dariji wa gbagbe all the seven times of yesterday that one is washed away go go igba meje ana ati we so nu and today lo ni pe this is you know just going to about 10:30 so si mo pe kan bi agun mewa mo lo pe ni bi she has only offended you two times oya e meji pe la sa lo ise o And you know she is still going to the limit of seven. Eh, ike je lo sin lo. The toast in the morning is born. Eh, ike se on se la ro jo. The water is not in the bathroom in time. Omi ko te te de ba ni we. Your clothes is not ironed. Ah, to la sho re. And the children, you know, the children are not well cared for. Ko si tojo amo da da. And she is not doing what she ought to do for you. Ko si she amo kato ya ko she fun o. How many times in a day? Ni ba be lo lo jo. Just keep on forgiving. Sha ma dariji. If a Jesus, you know, surprises these people. Jesus ti le ya awon ni awon ile. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew ori keji ni logun. Love is what will keep your marriage together. Ife ni o ti yo pa igbe yawo re mo. The love that will never criticize. Ife te ko ni benu atelu ni. In Matthew chapter 18. Matthew ori keji ni logun. Verse 21. Ese ko kan ni logun. Here we come. O ni yi. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Ni gba na ni Peteru to wa wi pe Oluwa. Ni gba me lo le arakunrin mi yo se mi ti emi o si fi ji titi di igba meje. O ni so remember you told us seven times in a day. Is that the whole limit of everything? Be ni mo ran ti igba to so fun ife lerin meje lo ojo se o ton ni. And Jesus said that was when I was talking about a day. Jesus so o si da wi pe igba ti mo so ni pa ojo ni. Jesus said unto him I say not unto thee until seven times but until seventy times seven. Wonderful God. Jesus Jesus wi fun pe emi ko wi fun pe titi di igba meje bi ko se titi di igba dorin meje a olorun iya no. If everybody obey that sentence there will be no ดีโกเกนี่อบาดบอสิโกโนเอเลนุโกนิสิโกสิเลมอีกบาดอนิเมเจดูยูโนเอนี่บอดี้ดัตอาเซเวอร์ออฟเฟนเดดดูเซเว
by the time you get to 20 or 30, you say, God, I don't remember any other. And God says, haven't you read your Bible? Don't you have grace in your heart? Don't you understand how far Jesus went on the cross of Calvary to die for you and to forgive you your sins? And then God says, you cannot remember 30 sins your wife committed against you. You stand up and let me tell you how many sins you committed against me. You know God remembers everything. And God begins to number them. And it goes to 100 and to 200 and to 300 and to 1000. You say, God, me. He says, yes, I forgive you all that. You know in verse 23. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. When he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him that owed him ten thousand talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. And the servant fell therefore down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the dead. But the same servant went out. Found one of his fellow servants. We showed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him. Took him by the throat saying, Pay me that thou owest. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, Have patience with me, I will pay thee all. Father, if another person is kneeling down before you, what do you want him to do again? Your wife is saying, Oh, my husband, I'm sorry. What do you want her to do again? Weeping and praying and pleading with you, have mercy upon me. What do you want her to do again? For this man, the Bible says he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant and saw what was done. They were very sorry and they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that death because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I have pity on thee? Nigba na nigba ti oluwa re ri nigba ti oluwa re pe tan o wifun pe ah iwo iran she buburu yi mo fi bobo gbe se ni jio ni tori ti iwo be mi iwo ki si sha nu iran she gbe re gege bi mo ti sha nu fun o. And his Lord was wrong. Oluwa re si bi nu. Isn't God annoyed and angry and wrathful when you refuse to forgive your wife? She you know ki bi olorun nigba ti o ba ko lati dari di aya re. Isn't God sad and unhappy? When you keep that single sin against your wife, against your husband for one day, for one month, for one year, for ten years. He delivered him to the tormentor till he should pay all that was due unto him. I mean, if God will call you back and say, since you are not willing to forgive your wife or forgive your husband, you come and pay me what you owe me. And be alone, you battle, what do we pay? A shetty or correct, or correct, she shall tell you, I shall talk back, talk about it, and what's on the book, a shetty son. How will you pay God? Only Jesus can pay your debt. Yes, we can only say, it is so great, it is so deep, it is so high, it is so eternal that only Jesus can pay. Oh, 
ja o jile o si to bi o gboro o si je aya e to be ga to je pe jesus nikan lo le san and if god has forgiven you forgive your wife bi olorun ba ti darijo darije aya forgive your husband darijo ko re after what have they done ha ki no won ti se you remember joseph oran ti joseph his brethren took him awon e gbon re mu he said here comes the dreamer let us kill him won ni alala na mi ye je kata won ni pe they remove this clothes nigba to de won bo la and they made a goat and you know they they killed that goat and began to eat won si pa eran kan won be si nje they put the clothes and the blood won fi e je re si won fi e je and then they sold him to egypt o wa sha ti egypt you know what he suffered o mo to ji he went to the house of potiphar o lo si le potiphar the wife of potiphar told the lie against him ya wo potiphar di paro mo from there he went to the prison lati be lo lo si no tu bu that man suffered okun e ji and eventually he came out of the prison lo ko re o jade ni no tu bu the lord made him to come out oluwa je ko jade and his own brethren that sold him they were looking for food awon e gbon re to what awon si won je they came to egypt and he recognized them won wa si egypt o mo what did he do ki lo se he forgave them o da he gave them food o fun won lo je he put their money back o fun o fi o won pada made an arrangement for them to come again o si se to fun won lati they came again o pada wa and he told them with tears and with keys and he said i am your brother whom you saw o wa so fun won pelu omi je ati bani kedo bi pe mi ni aburo yi ti eta but he had been separated from the family 17 years or 13 years o si ya pa kuro lo de bi re ko di odun metala Yet he forgave. See me, Odari. Do you remember David? David. David was a person that had saw. David did learn it on a solo. He played on the instrument. Let the man know. And he was beat with the bar. And then he used to be so strong. Then he went to the battle, and then he he defeated Goliath. Otu lasi ojo, otu shagun Goliath. And the women began to sing. I won't be no abe. Saul became unhappy. He knew Saul was bad. And he was chasing that boy about. No abe. See Lord, don't mind. When he was playing the harp with the son. He was on lo, on tahar. How do a javelin wanting to kill? Saul saw Kolulu he saw Saul when he was sleeping oh this Saul never to you have said let me strike him on the wall you have we pay jack him pallet your enemy will die no he is not my enemy is the anointed of god i will not touch the anointed of god with my mouth with my hand with my sword i went to a far away place oh lo si bi to ji He said, Saul, my father. Oh, Saul, you are bad. Why are you chasing after me? I love you. I never count any offense against you. My hand will never touch you. And then he apologizes for even cutting his garment. Look at Jesus Christ. He healed them. He delivered them. He provided for them. He gave them food. He gave them everything. He said, crucify him. He crucified him. On the cross, he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken? Ni ori agbele bo ni baba baba yi e se ti wo fi komi and before he die he said father forgive them oni baba dare they know not what they do look at steve in the fourth matter of the church o stefano eni a ko ti ti ni go do with power o wa su ere be to go so and they began to stone him he looked up into heaven father stop not this thing against me baba ma se kai se si won lorun what has your wife done kini ya wo re What has your husband done? That you want to divorce? Jesus said, "Forgive seventy times seven times. Stay together, live together, raise your children together, build your home together. Don't be separated. Don't live apart. Remain together. You are one flesh. It's indivisible. It's indissoluble. If you refuse, you back up. Look at verse twenty thirty-five. So likewise, shall my heavenly Father." But I do also if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Ben now gege ni baba mi tin be le ohun yo se fun yo se fun yin bi olukuluku ko ba fi tokan tokan re dariji ese dari ese arakun re ji forgive one another e dariji ara if you are married you about to shake your say married e ma gbe right stop and let's pray e de duro ki agbadura Unity in the family is wonderful. Isho kan ninu ebi ti abaya. So precious. O So holy and special. O je mi ma ti akan se. Flowing and descending. O se o se. The grace of God will give you the power, the ability, the energy to be able to live with your wife and husband to forgive one another. O re o fe lo yo fo ni okun ipa ti agbara lati ma gbe pelu oko atabi aye are ke. If you are separated, come back together again. Bi e ba ti yaka e tun jo wa papo. If you are living apart, come back together again. There's a plan of God. There's a will of God. Search for one another. Forgive one another. And begin to live together again until 
Girls shall do you part. Titi, we are here in the bar. 